Hey guys, Joey here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you some ways to process acoustic guitar. Getting acoustic instruments to cut through a rock mix is a tough task. They have way more dynamic range than electric instruments, and their frequency response is a lot more unpredictable. I'm gonna show you a few common problems and how I like to solve them. The first problem is the dynamic range. This sounds great in a singer-songwriter style or a classical performance, but in rock, the acoustic, it just gets lost. To fix the dynamic range, let's start with compression. I'm gonna do this in two stages, first on the individual tracks and then on the acoustic guitar bus. Load any compressor on the individual acoustic tracks. The goal here is to get each take consistent and pretty similar in volume. I'm gonna go pretty light on the settings. I like the sound of the slower release here. It really helps reinforce the body of the tone and smooth it out. These guitars are hitting pretty similar levels, so we can leave it here. If your mix ends up having different loudness with the same settings, then keep messing with those parameters until they are mostly equal. Now that the tracks are consistent, let's get them closer to the front of the mix with a bus compressor. I love Billy Decker's Bus Glue Acoustic for this application. It works really well for acoustic because it has a multiband and a limiter in series. If you want to recreate this without it, I'd start there. The settings couldn't be more simple here. I'm going to set the overall loudness with the decorate limiter. Cool. Now let's shape the tone with the clamp knob. This basically tames the low end and applies compression that makes each hit more impactful. Yep, that's sitting just where I need it. These dynamics are totally under control. Now let's clean up the frequency spectrum. EQing an acoustic guitar is a very mix dependent thing. There are a few factors I'd like to keep an eye out for. Is the acoustic part the main focus or a supporting element? What else is happening frequency wise in the other instruments? And how does the actual guitar recording sound? Different guitars, mics, and rooms will all be pretty different, so you've gotta take that into consideration. For this song, the acoustic rhythm is a supporting element. The mix is pretty static, so there's no need for automating the EQ, and the guitar is a little dull. Taking all of this into consideration, I'm going to brighten the guitar and cut some of the body down to make room for the electric guitars and drums. Let's make some space for the snare by cutting a little low end. Okay, next I need to carve out some space for the electric guitars. A cut somewhere around 1K should help. I'm hearing a little harshness around 4 to 6K, so let's deal with that next. Some of the super high frequencies are distracting for this song, so I'm gonna do a little bit of a low pass until I hear that fizzy air get less noticeable. I'm using the EQ after the bus glue on this mix since I like the way that the compressor is reacting. Cutting and boosting frequencies before bus glue will drive it differently, which might not sound the way that you intended. Check out how the plug-in order can affect the tone.
It's a subtle difference, but it definitely changes the way that the compressor reacts. Since there's less low end and more high end going in, the compressor is reacting more to the transients and less to the body of the guitar. Placing the EQ before the compressor gives you a little more control over the compressor, and placing it after gives you a little more control with the EQ. Try it out both ways and see how it sounds in your mix. Now we've got a great sounding consistent acoustic tone, but it's really dry compared to the drums and electric guitars. I'm going to fit these acoustic guitars into the same world as the rest of the song using reverb. I want a room style tone for these acoustics, so let's start with the room mode. If you don't have Skybox, a reverb with a room or even a small hall setting could work. Set the decay or reverb length to a level where it sounds more lively, but it isn't so long that it just becomes ambience. Most reverbs have a built-in frequency processor. The tone knob does that here. I'm looking for a level where I get more air, but not so much that it sounds like a completely different tone. Listening to the drums is a good indicator of how bright to make this room sound. Awesome! That's bringing a little more life to the acoustic guitar without turning it into background noise. Enhancing the stereo field after a reverb is a great trick to make your acoustic guitars sound more distinct. The guitars and their reverb are already stereo, so pushing them off to the sides a little bit will clean up the center of the mix. This simultaneously makes the guitars more audible, and clears up the space for other instruments. I'm not looking for a very drastic effect here, just increase the width a bit until you hear the center of your mix open up. Awesome. The acoustic isn't competing with the center of the mix anymore. It's a pretty simple process, and if you've done it right, it won't actually change the sound of your acoustic. The goal is just to get them out of the way. Now that I've gone through the rhythm track, let's have some fun on the leads. I've got a separate acoustic lead bus with the same settings as the regular acoustic bus, so most of this processing is just going to be done to the individual tracks. Let's start with the hard panned chords. Just like before, I'm going to control the dynamics on each track. Great, now for the fun part. Load a reverb directly on the tracks. Something with pre-delay and a long tail will work for this. The cloud mode in Skybox takes a while to reverberate, so it's gonna be perfect for getting the right texture from these guitars. Just mess with the decay and the mix until the chords sound pushed back and ambient. Awesome. Now let's get the tremolo acoustic in the mix. I'm using the same dynamic settings as before. I'm going to filter out some of the high end and make a few EQ reductions to get a little smoother and thinner tone. Now let's load a reverb. I'm going to use the same settings as the chords with a higher mix for a really cool ambient drone. Since there's a ton of ambience right on the tracks, I'm just going to pull down the mix of the room reverb on the acoustic lead bus.
With just a bit of simple processing, these acoustic guitars went from dry, inaudible, and out of place to something really memorable and defined. They have three very different tones that work well with the other instruments in the mix. With instruments like an acoustic guitar, banjo, violin, or any other more traditional string instrument, it's incredibly important to understand its place in the mix. If the strumming drives the rhythm of the song, the acoustic has to be upfront and powerful. If there's arpeggiated single notes that outline the key of the section, they have to be audible and clear. Just like any part of mixing, the intent is key. How do you process acoustic guitars in modern mixes? Do you try and fit it in naturally or create something new from an acoustic tone? There's a million ways to mix an acoustic, so share your favorite tips in the comments below. Who knows? Maybe we'll even learn something from each other. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check the links in the description below and tap that bell to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Until next time, happy mixing.